Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the Windows Credential Editor, also known as WCE, for post exploitation on Windows. All right. So for those of you who have never heard of WCE before, and I'll be uh, I'll be alternating between the abbreviation uh, and um, and the actual name. So WCE, Windows Credential Editor. So do bear with me. So for those of you who don't know what WCE is, uh, it is essentially a tool that allows you to harvest hashes from a Windows based system or a Windows operating systems rather. Now I've already talked about um, using tools like Mimikatz before, so you can watch those videos if you're interested in tools like that. And you'll see why these various tools exist in a second. So uh, in terms of functionality, what does the WCE have to offer or what can it give us, right? So firstly, it allows us to perform pass the hash attacks on Windows, of course. Secondly, you can obtain NTLM or uh, uniquely NT and LM hashes from memory. So these come from both uh, interactive logins uh, or logons, services, and, and of course, remote desktop connections. Uh, and thirdly, it allows us to dump clear text passwords entered by users at logon. All right, so WCE is a security tool that is widely used by uh, professionals and penetration testers to uh, essentially test the security of Windows systems, uh, you know, uh, when performing penetration tests. Uh, so it currently supports Windows XP, Windows 2003, Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows uh, Server 2008, and Windows 8. So it does not support Windows 10. That's something very important to take into consideration. So this is a mainly useful uh, if you're if you're performing penetration tests on Windows-based systems or or on a uh, Windows uh, 7 based network. Sorry, not a Windows based system uh, but on any of the operating systems that I just listed uh, and uh, of course this will uh, this becomes very important if you are performing a C if you are in CTFs or you're working on hack the box or you know, whether you're doing your OSCP uh, you will come across various uh, Windows operating systems like Windows XP Windows Windows 2003 uh, Windows 7 Windows Server 2008 etc etc so for Windows 10, I've already covered how to do that. Uh, so let's get uh, let's actually get started. So uh, by default, um, uh, Kali Linux comes prepackaged with the WCE or the Windows Credential Editor, and it is accessible by going into the directory user share, and uh, we want to go into the WCE directory. So if I list all the files in here you can see that we have the WCE 32-bit executable and the WCE 64-bit executable. We also have a WCE uh, universal executable here. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, why exactly do we have a WCE executable file on Kali? And how, how do we actually use WCE? Because uh, if there's an executable, how are we going to go about using it? Well, uh, this is exactly how it works. All right. So as mentioned earlier, it is used in penetration tests and in CTFs that utilize Windows. So that's your first hint. Secondly, it works extremely well in post exploitation uh, when uh, talking about credential harvesting or dumping hashes and passwords. All right. So uh, in terms of post exploitation, it is a fantastic tool when uh, talking about Windows based operating systems or Windows operating systems for that matter. Uh, and uh, all you need to do to use this tool is to upload the WCE executable to, to the target system and run it. Now, that being said, that means you need to already have uh, you need to already have exploited the system uh, that you, you, you're going to be uploading the WCE executable to. And that makes sense because this is a post exploitation tool. So all you need to do is simply upload this executable to your target operating uh, to your target uh, computer or server, whatever it is. All right. And uh, I already have uh, my environment set up. So let me explain how uh, I'm going to be demonstrating this uh, to you. So I have a Windows 7 virtual machine that's currently running on my VM server. So it's it's currently not on my host operating system. So I have Kali here and I have my Windows 7 VM running on my um, on my VM server. Uh, and what I've done is I've actually sent a payload to that Windows VM that is going to give uh, that is going to allow us to get a uh, Meterpreter uh, reverse shell on our on, on Kali Linux right over here. So I've already set the options or I'll set the options in a second. So that is basically the environment we're going to be working on. So I've sent a meterpreter payload onto my Windows 7 VM. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, check my monitor here and uh, we can get started. So if I show the options, 
Uh, let's see if I've set any of the options. No, I haven't, but you can see that the payload I'm using is the interpreter and it is reverse TCP. That is the connection type. So again, you can do this however you want. Uh, as long as you've already exploited your target, uh, you can use the interpreter functionality to upload executables and you can also download files, etc, uh, etc. Et so um, to get started, we will set the uh, L host here. So set L host and that is, uh, let me just confirm my local IP for Kali here. Uh, so I have config and that is 192.168.1.103 right over here. And I will set that. So 192.168.1.103, hit enter. And I set the L port on the payload to 1234 and we are ready to go. All right, uh, whoops, sorry about that. I actually missed an R there. And we'll just wait for this to return the error. There we are. All right, so we can get started. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to hit run here. And I'm now going to execute the payload on my VM. So just give me a few seconds. I'm just going to hit run and we're going to execute it. And there we are. All right, so now we have a interpreter session and we're ready to go. So if I type in my system information here, you can see that we're running Windows 7 Service Pack 1. Excellent. So we can begin. Uh, and we currently have two logged on users that will come that will be very important as we move along. All right. So as I mentioned, uh, to get it to work, you need to upload that executable to your target and a interpreter gives us this functionality uh, using the upload command. All right. So the upload commands allows us to specify uh, any file that we want to upload to the target. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to check my current working directory. So uh, I uh, primarily want to have this within your system32 uh, folder so that you can execute it uh, within the command prompt. So uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, but sorry, we are in uh, the Windows 7 uh, user here. Um, so yeah, we'll just go back to um, Windows and uh, let me just clear that up. So if I list the files here, uh, Windows and system32. Uh, system32 and uh, we print the directory just to confirm we are in that directory yes we are all right so we want to upload it to this directory and uh, now your architecture is something to also take into consideration and when I say that I am referring to your system architecture and your operating system architecture so uh, for in my case if I type in system info you can see that I'm currently running a 32-bit version which means I'm going to have to upload the WCE 32-bit executable here all right, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit upload and now I need to specify the local directory uh, to the file or executable that I want to upload. So user share uh, and this is WCE and uh, we are just going to uh, we're going to say WCE uh, 32. I'm going to say 32.exe and we, we are just going to hit enter or you can specify the directory you want on your target operating system. Uh, but I'm just going to hit upload. And there we are, upload is complete. And uh, now if we list the files in here and we grab the output and we say WCE, uh, WCE32.exe and hit enter, you can see we have the file right over here and we're able to execute it. All right, so let's get started now with actually displaying some of the hashes and passwords. All right, so uh, in terms of using WCE, as I mentioned, uh, you can execute it uh, right over here. Uh, but before we really do that, let me just get a shell so that we can actually execute it directly. So WCE32.exe, uh, if we use the help option and we hit enter, you can see we have uh, various options that you can use. I'm going to be covering the most important options here. So if you're simply uh, to run the WCE32.exe here and I hit enter, what this is going to do is it's going to list all the hashes of all the users that are currently logged on. So if I hit enter, whoops, sorry about that, guys. Uh, WCE32.exe uh, and I hit enter. This is going to list uh, the hashes of all the uh, users that are logged on. So you can see that we've got our user, our domain. Uh, we've got our, uh, this is our LM hash and this is our NT hash right over here that both give you your NTLM hash. Uh, I'll be explaining the structure of an NTLM hash in a second. Uh, but before we do that, let me just show you a few other commands. So you can export these hashes and then you can use tools like John the Ripper or Hashcat to crack them uh, if you are going to do it offline. However, we can also use uh, WCE or the Windows Credential Editor uh, to essentially um, uh, retrieve or dump the passwords in clear text for users that are currently logged on. Uh, so I can see WCE32.exe. Uh, uh, WCE32 
and for this we use the w command all right but if we open up the help menu or you can actually see it right over here this will dump clear text uh, password stored by the digest authentication package so these users have to be logged on so if I hit W and I hit enter, you can see that the password for this user, Windows 7, and uh, w w that exists in the domain Windows 7 VM is test bench pass. And I just simply set a simple password so that I can, uh, I can actually show you how this works. All right, so this does not involve any cracking. That's something very important to take into consideration. However, if you're not, if you're not able, if you don't have any other users logged on, but they are users on this particular Windows system, you can dump the hashes and then crack them offline. I'll be making these follow up videos to cracking Windows uh, hashes in the next video. But for now, I just simply want to focus on how to use uh, the uh, Windows credential editor. All right. So uh, if we want to retrieve the NTLM hash for a particular password, so this clear text password, so test bench pass, uh, I can type in WCE32.exe and I can say uh, we can use the G command and if you see right over here this will generate the LM and NT hash which is your uh, NTLM hash uh, in general and I'll explain that in a second so uh, G and I say test bench uh, password and I hit enter it'll generate our uh, if you look at the, uh, the the direct order which is listed over here you have your LM hash and your NT hash so your LM hash is first and your NT hash is uh, second right over here. Now, let me explain a little bit about Windows hashes. I'll be making a follow up video, but let me just explain it so you can understand it. So uh, first of all, this is an NTLM hash right over here. All right. And you might be asking, well, NTLM hashes, are, you know, they're cool and all, but can you explain the structure? So the structure is as follows. You have your username. This is the username uh, of the particular user. You then have the domain, all right? So the domain that they're currently connected to. You then have the landman hash or the uh, the LM hash right over here, which was, um, this was actually uh, used in previous Windows operating systems. However, it's less secure than the NT hash. So the NT hash, which is right over here, succeeded uh, the LM hash right over here. So uh, the, uh, the NT hash is much more secure. So Altogether, it becomes the NTLM hash in case you're wondering. So I simply just wanted to explain that so that you can understand how to do it. So that is pretty much all that I wanted to cover in regards to using the Windows Credential Editor. I'll be covering more on, you know, Windows penetration testing. And I simply wanted to cover a little bit about the Windows Credential Editor because it is an important tool to know how to utilize for your penetration tests, especially in large networks that may be utilizing older versions of Windows. Um, so that's pretty much going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section on my social networks or at the forum at hackersploit.org. And I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.